Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step -step project, episode number 135. This is the 135th session I have done writing this script in front of you. I, every Monday through Friday, if I can make it, I come to you at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to let you look over my shoulder, share my screen as I write a script in the hope of demystifying the process of screenwriting. Um, and it is all about process. This is all about process, trying to teach you the importance of process. Everybody else teaches how to write a great script and what makes a great script. You know what really makes a great script? Existing having been written. And in order to get that, you need a process. You need to figure it out step by step, day by day, scene by scene. And so that is what I am trying to show you. It's not the best process. It's not the professional way to do things. Different people do different ways. You figure it out yourself. I'm just showing you how I figured it out myself in my 25-year career as a screenwriter in Hollywood, working on TV shows and movies. So I'm just walking you through what I do in the hope that when you sit down in front of a blank page, it's helpful that you can say, oh, I can take that part of it. You don't have to do the whole thing. You don't have to watch this whole thing. For God's sake, it's 135 hours already. Just watch a piece of it. Get a feeling for the process, for what it's like to build an outline, use an outline as a workspace, and as a things to do list, and then drafts, write, rewrite, write, rewrite. You're constantly rethinking, reshaping, going back and forth between that kind of editing point of view and that creating point of view, just working in two different minds, going back and forth. It's not like it's a straight line where you say, ah, I get this all planned out, and then I write it, and then it's done. That's not how it works. A whole bunch of people are here, so I'm going to say hi. Hi, this is Kitchy. Hello, Jean. Welcome. Hello, Maratoso. Hello, Natasha. Okay, so if you remember, we are in the cutting mission. We are in the mission to go through the 90 pages of Rust Draft and turn it into 60 pages of Rough Draft, because then I can actually start to rewrite it. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. Uh, this is where I was. Uh, and uh, already, I can tell you, this has still got to be cut. It's still too long. But what you do is you cut what you notice, what you immediately see. You don't have to get it perfect. You don't have to like get through page one and make sure it's right and then do page two. You just go through. If something catches your eye that's not right or that you think could be better, you fix that and then you go on and you get a bit of it, and then later you come back, and now you see it differently, partly because that piece has changed. That's how I'm going to do it. I am showing it to you as we go. Hello, Larry. Hello, Aaron. Got folks here uh, to watch me cut. Okay, so. Um, but I have a secret weapon. That you See, uh, I'm just going to take this whole line out because it's not important. I'm going to use this podcast to... Uh, Oh, I see the secret weapon. Nah, that's okay. Um, yeah, this, this is a very long way to say this. Um, I can't quite fix it now. That's okay. You fix what you can fix, and then later you come back and you fix another piece. Um, <laughs> is it ever okay to have a long block of action? For example, if there is a character in a scene alone or two people barely speaking but doing things, yes, but. Um, in general, here, if we look at this, um, this is a lot of prose. This is a lot of text. I wrote this knowing <laughs> that I was going to cut it. The answer is, even if you have a block of action, um, you want to break it up. Um, so, for instance, this I'm going to cut. But if you notice, like, this is actually one or two things, but I'm breaking it into four paragraphs because this is easier to read than this. Um, try not to run big paragraphs. 
Um, now and then, if you want to like blow somebody's mind with some coherent thought that requires a block of text, but just know people who read scripts generally do not want to read a block of text. Um, however, could you have a long, uninterrupted series of these short little lines? Yes, I would make some of them even shorter. For instance, with a humming grinding, let's take out humming. Um, shorter is better. Less words is good. When people are reading scripts, well, this is actually a, a key thing to remember, and it relates to what I'm about to do uh, with the cutting. The people who are reading scripts are not reading it for the pleasure of reading. They did not sit down and say, ooh, I want to read a script. They said, my job requires me to read a pile of scripts bigger than the Empire State Building. So therefore, they want to read as little of the script as possible, and they want to make it, it wants to move as quickly as possible through the story and the characters. Um, that's what, what script readers want. So when you start to write big blocks of text or, or great deals of descri description, you are, you are pushing them away. You are, you are making them not want to read. So I, I'm not going to leave this. Um, um, so that's the answer is yes. If you've got two people and they're just sitting in a room and they're playing cards and the way that they behave is important and they're not saying anything and you just want to describe that, but describe it in short beats. Um, okay, sorry for this, this black t-shirt. Uh, let's forget that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start cutting, 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 cutting. Okay, see now this looks easier to read than what was it? Um, look, less words, less words. What are you even emphasize? A garage door opener doesn't matter where. Okay, see. Now this is shorter and more readable than what you just saw before. If you, uh, if you are watching on uh, and you can replay this, run it back, look at what we just did. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do even more. See, this is a lot of words to say this. There, look at that. Now we are cutting. This is beginning to read like a script. Okay, see this? This is much better than what I had when I started. Um, see, this kind of, this is nice writing, but second. Uh, 
I'm going to see. There's, there's got to be a way. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting someplace. Okay, so now this, if you'll notice what I just did here, also is beginning to focus, it's focusing more and more on the action, the action of opening the door and revealing this, the one fact, it's a garage, it's a shabby garage. Um, the 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 full 360 degree detail of the garage doesn't matter as much as the act of revealing a new piece of character information uh so that is a better thing plus it's a good four or five lines shorter um and i'm still let's let's face it i am still wasting a lot of space with this I mean, this this could be shorter. I could I could combine them two, but the reason I'm leaving them like this is because I want that mental beat. You know, I'm not sure how they'll film it, but the mental beat of he switches it off. It is dark and silent. Actually, dark and silent. There we go. Goes to press. Uh, Okay, so now here's the thing. Garage, garage, garage. Also shabby. Shabby. See, there's there's things that I I didn't even notice here. Shabby, shabby. How many times do we say garage? How many times? Is so big wooden up a big wooden door. Garage door opener pulls up. Pulls up the big, pulls up hmm. with a grinding noise, the garage door opener pulls up most of one wall. Look at that. All right, look at that. Now it's even shorter. And the truth is when you've got a really long, I mean, I've, I've got 30 pages to cut. I can't see what, what we had here. Let's take a look. See, see, okay. Light floods in from the outside, washing the studio in late afternoon light. Well, as wonderfully repetitive as that is to pound into your eye the light, the truth is we don't need it. All we have to say is light front floods in from outside, exposing the unfinished walls and doors are shabby, rickety, and it doesn't have to be rickety, shabby two-car garage. Look at that. We are now, this is readable and, uh, and it's moving, and this reads like a screenplay. Plus, I've still taken my beats here. Uh, yeah. Metal, not industrial. Uh, shorter and less less snazzy. And by the way, papers. Don't need papers because the file boxes are full of papers. There we go. Look at this. Okay, now we have got this reads like reading. 
Okay. When I'm writing it, I'm just describing everything I can think of. But when I'm trying to tell the story in the script, this is this is what cutting is all about. This is what screenwriting um, is a very specific kind of guiding the reader's brain in a very fast, continually engaging and moving way, which is very different from prose, very different from fiction, where sometimes you really want to slow down and examine things. Uh, you don't usually need to do that. Um, this is this is actually a big hunk of words, but because it's a big moment, I think it's okay. Um, I'll see what else I can do. I can always, you know, put this on the same line um, and save a because when it gets down to like how many pages are you, you really can't run too many pages over the limit. If you run over the top limit of a script, for instance, if for a for an hour long drama, if you're running over sixty pages, professionals are going to be pissed off. And if you hand uh, in a feature script that's over 120 pages, honestly, over 110, um, people are going to be like, oh, there's he doesn't know what he's doing or there's something wrong here um, or he's he's just arrogant and out of control. One way or another, they're going to say this is not OK. There are people who mess with margins and crap, but don't do that. Just play the game. Play it honestly. OK. Um, this is not good, but I will get back to it. Um, right now, by the way, one of the main things I'm going to do is I am just trying to move. <laughs> I'm only on page three. <laughs> I've got 91 pages left to go. So I'm just going to see every cut I can make without thinking about any other tasks. Okay, so the door from the yard of the kitchen is, is he has a hard time getting it to close. That is really wonderful, and we don't need it. <laughs> um, okay, so this is actually going to be later. Goes back to work. Uh, this is an outline thing. He's going to go back to work before this happens. Um, so I'm just going to... Okay, for instance, he gets a funny expression on his face. Where else is he going to have the funny expression? He's going to get a funny expression on his shoulder? We don't need that. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, the difference between continuous and at the same time is literally what they say. Um, which I, I'm not saying that to make fun of you. I'm saying that it helps to know this. Continuous means you're literally continuing. The action is moving. You are tracking a character as they do something. At the same time means you are in a different place, but the thing is happening at the same time. But that's not continuous. For instance, George is not walking from his studio into the kitchen at the same time. He's doing it one step after another. So it's continuous. If he was in if he's in the studio and his wife is in the house at the same time and he walks and she's there and he walks in, that's at the same time. At the same time means two things are happening at the same time. Continuous means you are following, you're tracking from one step to the next. Okay. Um. I'm just, he doesn't slow. I'm just cutting words. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to stick with this. I'm just cutting words, um, cutting words.
Yes, exactly. But it's not just a future time. It is the exact next future time. It's the, uh, it's the, con- it's continuous. <laughs> it's just what it says. Um, yeah. It's one time after another with no break. That's continuous. Okay. Like even, even this, like, okay, now this word, these words, it's not just that to him is, um, it's not adding that much page length, but it actually is, but that's not the point. The point is you are trying to clear the clutter for the reader's mind. So George recognized what is happening to him. He was just talking about it. That to him is, of course, that's what's happening. We don't, we don't need that. It's, it's a better read. It's not only about page space. It's about mental clarity. It's about, um, and not always clarity. Sometimes it's mental experience. It's, it's the reader's flow on the page. You are steering the reader through the experience and you want to do that with as little distraction where you're, pay, you're saying, pay attention to my words, pay attention to the fact that I'm telling you the story. So I'm just cutting words. He staggers to the wall, not to the landline telephone. Oh, I don't know about that. I think a lot of this is actually going to go, but um, because he's it, actually going to be uh, in in the garage. So I don't know that there is a wall-mounted landline in the garage. So I'm going to take his throat is closing up and I'm going to move it here because this is saying the same thing, but it's saying it better because his throat is closing up. See, this is where the words go. I'm just doing this because it reads better. Just cutting words to make a better read. Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put that. Um, and, and a fascinating debate. Um, when two people look at each other, yes, it is at the same time. Um, when it's raining, isn't that also, I mean, it's raining at the same time. But I, I actually get, even, I'm just playing. I'm just being playful here because, uh, but I get it. Yes, uh, uh, two people in one place at one say. But what we're talking about is um, when you're changing scene, but you're saying, continuous or at the same time. This is when it, the, it matters. Is uh, the stage... Yes, yeah, that's a note to myself. Okay, this is a good thing. Goes back to work and I put it in bold so I would know that this is just, it's a note to myself. I have to rewrite this whole section. That's why I'm not overly thinking about it. Um, what I'm going to do there is in the outline, I happen to remember, hang on a second, there we go, um, this. He's, oh, let me remove this so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I made a note that I'm going to have him get stop and start, put the getting up and going out about two-thirds of the way through. He grabs some food, comes back, starts recording again, and then the poison hits. So I remember that that's going to happen. So I don't want to make this perfect because it's wrong. <laughs> He's not going to be in the kitchen for that long. Um, he's going to go back to work. So I just made a note to myself, go back to work. So the next time I read this, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But right now I'm not rewriting. I'm just cutting, making more readable. Hi, Mythical. Since your answer to my comment, I've been able to write every day. That's so great. Yay. Excellent. 
I think I'll, uh, a lot more. That is great. You are, I, thank you. That is so great to hear. This is a testimonial, people. <laughs> things can help. Uh, things can get better. Uh, congratulations, by the way. Love that that logo there, uh, that uh, icon. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, the original question was in scene lines, what's the difference between same time and continuous? Um, all right, so. George dies. I'm going to capitalize that. Um, okay. Mind changes a uh, whole new place. Um, yes, yes. Let us, let us give some praise to Mythical. Nice. I am really glad that you found a, a way to break through the, you know, one of the biggest things in life, um, in writing life especially, is simply if you the thing you are doing is not working. No matter how much the other things seem like they are useless or not going to help, they're, it's better than doing the thing that's not working. So cool. Excellent. Try everything. Uh, do your best. Obviously, try the things I say because that's what I'm here for. Okay, here we got a case. We got... Um, a very clean, sparse workplace, very corporate, very late. I don't mind the very, very. That's fun. Three varies is wrong. I think laminate is unnecessary. Look at that. This is a better sentence than it used to be, a better paragraph than it used to be. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Hold on. We are going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, folks, here we go. Look at this. This is what cutting is about. It's not always about, uh, sometimes it's just about letting the brain get to the point. This is the reader. They, they want to hear this like new words getting sharp points every time. Um, I know more from this than from this. This is, this is buzzing in my head a little when I read it going, I, I'm getting too many words that aren't clear. They aren't, they aren't focused. They aren't, um, and clear clarity is really kind of overrated. Um, clarity is not the only thing. Emotion is really important. Experience, um, uh, narrative, character, those are the things that you're writing for. Um, when I say clear, I just mean I'm decluttering the character and the emotion and the points that I'm trying to make. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yes, let's, let's, give, uh, let's give Mythical some notes. Yes, exactly. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Brian. This is true. B, give yourself a break. Uh, there's a big difference between being gentle with yourself, being kind to yourself, and letting yourself slack off and not do stuff. Two separate things. You can tell the difference. You can tell the difference between, I'm going to say, okay, maybe my expectations are too high here, or I'm, I'm pushing myself too hard, and you know, I think I'm going to go uh, have some candy and not work. Different things. <laughs> um, congrats, Mitch Mythical. Um, keeping his positivity up. I like that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Be sure to tell him the name of the website. Um, that's great. Thank you, Aaron. I'm glad to hear that. Um, isn't it weird? The, the end of this is important. Uh, felt more confident coming out of it. When you explain something to someone else, that really helps you know it for yourself. Um, it, one of the things that happened for me was when I started teaching, which was now like almost 10 years ago, uh, I, I had to, I was teaching some UCLA extension classes uh, and, and, um, and it was my first attempts to organize my thoughts for screenwriting. The more I tried to explain it to other people, 
the better I got at, at actually doing it and the more that I could then explain more. Okay. Cutting, cutting, cutting. Boom. Okay, this is just a little too many words wearing. <sighs> Subtly stylish business suit. First of all, wearing. What else would she be doing with it? Let's see, this is one of the great things about um, screenwriting. You're not writing, it's, I think I have this here, hold on. Uh, it's not good writing, it's screenwriting. There we go. <laughs> um, you don't have to, you're, you're just directly reporting to the reader, so you don't have to, like, like I said, like what else would subtly stylish business suit mean than um, yeah. Subtly stylish suit, business suit. What other kind is it? Space suit? Yeah. Um, this will just have to get better at some point. So I'm just going to boom, boom, there. That's, that's my way of saying to myself, this is not good enough. Um, she's in a room, duh. She works with all younger, sloppier, and nerdier than she is. See, this is this is clearer. It's 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 telling the story better. Hmm. I'm just reading through this to get the point because this is this is lovely, but it's too wordy, and um, what I'm thinking here is that she works with. I was trying to organize the space in the reader's mind, and I I haven't decided. At first, I thought is she in her own cubicle? Sorry about that noise as I hit the desk with my ring. Um, is she in a cubicle? Does she in the same room? Is Does her, um, her tiny office looks out at four <laughs> Thank you. Hey, and welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you about the, the shirt. Yes, that, that shirt's a winner. I wish it was more comfortable. Um, I, I bought a cheap Western shirt instead of a quality Western shirt. So it's just 100% polyester and it's itchy as hell. Um, Then she is. I'm just cutting, by the way, and I am just cutting. I am cutting and cleaning up words for the next 93, 91 pages, because I have to get that 91 pages down to 60. <laughs> um, right now, I'm not doing that much cutting. I'm just cleaning, cl clarifying, making it flow, making the ideas pop. Um,
See, now here, few quick, simple gestures, calmly and efficiently, same thing. Same thing. Um, I, basically, this paragraph says the same thing five times, so I'm just um, I'm just trying to choose a couple and say, okay, this is good. See, this detail is just too much. There we go. See, this says it better than before because uh, I had this one, like she, I said, she's got a few simple gestures and then I said one. I didn't say what they all were. So it's better to either just say none of them or say all of them and don't say she's got it down to a few simple gestures. Um, okay, so the point is I cut a line or two. Okay, now this is a version of this. Uh, she doesn't talk like that. Tomorrow, kids. See you tomorrow, kids. Yeah, that's it. There you go. There we go. Okay. Because um, I had done two different versions of the same line. I'm just going to show you again. Here's the thing. I wrote this line is the same line, two variations. I wasn't sure which one I wanted. Uh, the chickadees simply is not the language that she developed later. So I'm going to just go back to, I just want to show you what was happening there is I had, I, when you don't know exactly how somebody's going to say something, throw down a couple of them. Later you look at it, you go, oh yeah, it's this. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know what? Consider just making it a book. <laughs> um, if it's that much fun to read, I, 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 the thing about screenplays is the readers, they don't appreciate what you're giving them. All right. Uh, see, this is one of those things, like, it's so easy to conceive of, like, Brenda's in the elevator, Madeline gets in. Um, already in elevator. It's already... Oh, you'd be surprised. Never seen a cut sequence made in a book. Uh, you mean like like uh, cool cuts, uh, like like edits? Um, you'd be surprised uh, how how you can do that with words. In fact, the, my whole point is that's what you're doing when you write a script. Same thing. Um, all right, this is not right yet, but. Um,
Don't need a beat there. For a full school year, I had to write the same thing three times to maintain a word minimum for assignments. It was good for being able to teach people. <laughs> um, yes, that's the, the. I had to write the same thing three times to maintain a word. Oh, I see what you're saying. You had to like basically say the same thing three different ways just to get the thing to be long enough. Yes. <laughs> um, like to, to say it three times to, 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 yeah, get it across in a minimum of the, yeah. Uh, okay, this is like a little extra. There's my point here is Brenda, she knows Brenda. This is just, um, I'm just going to I don't I don't know what I'm going to do about this so I'm just leaving it as a mess so that I know it's a mess. Um okay. So the point is Brenda says we have a meeting tomorrow um human resources. I like to think so. Um see this is ma this is making Brenda more interesting than she needs to be. Um and I am I in trouble or something? Uh, and and we get into this whole like they don't know what they're talking about. Um, but the truth is, we don't need any of this. This is a funny bit, but when you're ninety, when you're thirty-one pages over, you cut. <laughs> um, Yeah, this is still, this is not quite right. Um, you know, I, this is a really interesting question. I want to, I want to talk about this for a second because I am making it a thing. Um, here we go. Um, the, if you were to take a well-written screenplay and okay let's just let's just look at this here see this thing this is the problem and this is the problem uh, that the it's it's the formatting if you simply said like this if you said this in uh, you know um, in the lobby Madeline you could cut this. And then why not just have it be prose? Why not? I'm just going to do this for a second. Why not have it just be like this? You can even have like little breaks between the scenes if you want. But but also sometimes you can just do this. The thing is, why can't fiction be a good read? And and the thing is, like a lot of the stuff that I'm cutting, I would like to leave in, but I can't because of this fucking, sorry, I want to, don't want to lose my advertising status. <laughs> This freaking um, page limit that is only has to do with the fact that it's an episode which runs 60 minutes, so they say 60 pages. What if I have 70 pages? What if it really reads well at 70 or 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 93? You know, it just it whatever it is, being stuck in this stupid format is ridiculous. You could do this dialogue just as dialogue, as you know, with quotation marks and paragraphs and breaks and and let it flow and let it run as long as you want. And whenever you want to describe what someone is doing or feeling, you can just put it in. That's the difference, that screenwriters don't have confidence that they can write uh, a script into, could, could write fiction. It's the same writing. These things that you're doing are, are steering the mind of the reader. The cool thing is that if you were not trying as hard as I am trying to move fast, because screenplay readers don't want to read, you could expand it and get texture and, and pace and rhythm in all these ways. 
please, please, please consider that you the 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 writing you are doing is narrative writing about characters. That works in either thing. And the only thing that's messing us up here is this format and the industry regulations because your work is going to be used by, by people to make another thing. But, but you're writing, you are creating something. And it, it drives me nuts to think that we, we cut off our feet so that we can't run because of this industry, which most of the time doesn't care. And it, it just, it would be better to at least consider writing your, whatever you're doing, write it as a thing to read first. Write it as a thing to read so that anyone can read it. Because right now, nobody wants to read your script, <laughs> okay? Anybody who's in the business doesn't want to read it because they're only reading for business. Anyone who's not in the business doesn't want to read that format and they want you to have the room to write well. You don't have to write War and Peace. You know, you add a few pages worth of detail because you like to. You add some insight or some backstory because you can. Anyway, this is my uh, this is this is my little rant on the subject. Hello, Wolf. Um, yes, James Frey, a uh, screenwriting oriented writer. Um, no, the page limits is not only for TV. If you write a feature script and it's more more than 120 pages it is going to be viewed with fright with with skepticism and disdain um a feature length script really should be between 90 and 110 pages if it runs longer than that you are making the industry readers uneasy because except for just for budget reasons if nothing else when you start running long you make it very, very difficult for a, a script to be produced. Um, yes, right, writing, James Joyce wrote in the present tense, John Updike wrote in the present tense, lots of people write in the present tense. It's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, cool. Uh, okay, question from Javier. Uh, cheers, Javier. <laughs> a question if I may ask all the good people, Beautiful people gathered right here. What frightens you the most? A soft-spoken, calming villain or a yelling one for everything? That is an interesting question. And I have to just vote here that um, it depends on the situation and the rhythm and the balance of your whole story. Um, either one can just be killer. Um, there's something really scary about somebody who's like just out of control, like over the top. Um, but... Uh, it, the thing is, either one can become a cliche um, if you are not writing authentically to fit into your vision. Also, what's their personality about? What is their problem? What are they? What is what is their thematic meaning? That's where you're going to get your character. But everyone else should vote. You know, it's fine. Um, yes, absolutely. All, all sorts. Of, oh, there's all sorts of different ways to write. <laughs> Um, and dyslexics and <laughs> die. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got just a couple more minutes. I'm just going to... Uh... I'm just going to change the punctuation here. <laughs> And cut words. Okay, so here's the thing. Look, just the, the the way the way you think when you're writing the rough draft. The elevator doors open, revealing the lobby. Office building, lobby. In the lobby, Madeline has to say, "I know it's the lobby." Shut up! Boom. <laughs> Catches up with her. Catches up. Struggling. You don't know have catches up to say. Struggling with her desire to give good news. I guess. Uh, Ok. 
cutting, cutting, cutting. Uh, ba, 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 ba. That's the meeting tomorrow. Look at that. Less words. Less words. Um, yeah, most people are going to say soft-spoken. I don't know. It depends. <laughs> the, the nice ones who break, yes. Um, Okay, I'm just trimming, uh, trimming, trimming, trimming. Don't need to say this. I just love it. Someone who deserves. gets a promotion. Yeah, this is still a little long, but it's okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. Gets a promotion. This will have to get better. I just love it when a promotion is when a promotion is this is deserved. Righteous. Righteous. <laughs> That's fun. Cutting, 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 cutting. That is what we are doing. I'm sorry, I just I couldn't help it. I just love it when a promotion is righteous. Well, that's a better line uh, than what I had. You worked here 14 years. 14 years. 14 years you've worked your way. Actually, I think it's more, but 24 years. Worked your way up. 24 years. Worked your way up. First woman in your department. The first woman in your First female supervisor. I don't have a single complaint against you. Uh, I'm concerned for you, Wolf. Um, that's not good. <laughs> So Wolf is saying both, but Wolf, take care of yourself. Be careful out there. Um, okay, we're almost at the end of our hour, so I am going to uh, wind this down. But I am, I first of all, uh, cool everybody's voting on, in the chat on uh, Javier's question. Should you, or what's better, a villain who speaks softly or one who's loud and aggressive in it? And... Uh, uh, my personal vote is have all options available in your brain and then figure out a w like for me the soft spoken thing i've seen it so many times lately because people are like ah it'll be new that would be sort of cool to just go over the top in the other way um just because so many people like soft spoken there's a, there's a movie called sexy beast where ben kingsley plays this gangster who's just like in your face, um, which is really cool. Um, anyway, uh, write what you think is good. Thank you for the question. It has gotten a lot of great, uh... <laughs> yikes. Okay, uh, Wolf, 
Wolf, I, seriously, talk to the authorities. Be, be get you know, on the record. This is this is scary. I don't I don't like hearing this. Uh, I am concerned for you. Please take care of yourself. Um, yeah, when somebody always yells, then becomes softer. When somebody who's always soft suddenly yells, that that um, that really is it's uh, it shakes you up. It's a cool thing. Um, okay, you know, tomorrow we are going to cut some more. Cutting is going to be the job. It's going to be <laughs> possibly a couple of weeks. Um, I'm only on page six right now of 94 pages. So we got a lot of cutting to do. In the meantime, have a great night. Wolf, be careful. Uh, the rest of you take good care of yourselves. And I will... <laughs> Wolf, this is getting more interesting as we go along, but I, I am concerned. Okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. That is, yeah. I, I know where, where you're going there, Anne. Um, Okay, everybody, take care of yourselves, be good to yourselves, and go write something. <laughs>